Hey guys, welcome back. And today we have a treat for you. Today we're joined by Sonia Richards Ross from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but more importantly, four time Olympic gold medalist, mother, wife, business owner. She is dynamic. So before we jump into this conversation, you know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And with that, let's jump right in. It's time. For all your binge-worthy pop culture news, welcome to Up and Adam. Sonia Richards Ross, finally the time has come. How are you? I am doing well, Adam. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you. I'm doing well, thank you. I actually was just doing the intro right before this, and I totally tapped into your LinkedIn. Your resume is so impressive. I mean, four-time <laughs> Olympic gold medalist, <laughs> Nike brand amb ambassador. Then we have NBC sports analyst. You're on Real Housewives of Atlanta. You're a mother <laughs> and a wife, which is like the hardest job ever. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, my gosh. So how are thank we feeling? Because the new season's coming on soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it. You know, I think the first season, it's really tough because you don't know what to expect. And obviously, I hadn't met most of the girls before. Second season, I felt like I was ready. I got to know the girls better. And so I'm excited. I feel like my season two season, is our season 14 or 15? It's season 15, right? Season 15. Yeah, I feel like season 15 is going to be epic. I can't wait for it to start airing. Oh my gosh, even your trailer was insane. So I can't wait. It's definitely, I was just telling you before we came on here that we need you ladies back, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, because you deliver the fun and the shade at the same time. And yes. it's just like, it's a breath of fresh air. It really is, especially with the scandal and everything else happening out there. It's time to turn the page. It's time to turn the page. And I think this season, especially... You know, there's a lot of like, I feel what makes our show so special is that it's like so real, like the issues that come up are like, it's like real stuff. Like it's most times very unexpected. Um, this season, I feel like relationships were being built and being tested. We have some new girls in the mix. Like it's, uh, I feel like it's like two seasons in one. Two seasons in one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then before we continue on, I just have to ask you, how's your family, your kids, your, your yeah. husband, your, yeah. I mean, how are we doing? The family's good. So the nine of us are still here, okay. um, but not for much longer. <laughs> and that really unfolds this season. You know, it's like started out great and, you know, still some good parts about it, but it's time. So, you know, you'll kind of see what that looks like with our family, but everybody's healthy and happy and, you know, things are good. I love that. I love that. And you said going into the season, you pretty much you, it's like we got to take off the training wheels. Like you now yeah. know. You knew what you were getting into. You yeah. have been around these ladies. You know what to expect. It's like you think you're trusting one person for a minute. And then all of a sudden, you now see after rewatching the season, oh, you said that behind my back? Right. Oh, you were shady as hell in your confessional? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You're ready now. Learn that. Yep, I'm ready. Were there any relationships, if you can speak on this, but were there any <laughs> relationships throughout this season that surprised you that you maybe didn't expect to form? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I would say that um, Marlo and I have really become like super duper close. And I, you know, loved her last season, but it's like that time in between the show when you can really spend time and bond and then during the season. So I love to see how our relationship has blossomed and developed over this last season. Um, you know, Drew and I still have like a little tricky friendship. But there will be some revelations this season that I can't wait for you guys to see. <laughs> um, and we end in a good spot. So I'm happy that we ended in a better spot. And I just love the way Marlo and I, our relationship has really blossomed. I love that. And then, so I guess maybe you can't, and if you can't, again, that's okay to speak on this, but were there any relationships going through the process of filming this season that maybe disappointed you that you didn't expect? Um... Well, I, you know, I, still with Kenya, like we just, it's like, we should be a good match, but for some reason, there's just always something there. And so, you know, I'm a little so disappointed that we haven't been able to build a better friendship. Um, so you'll, you know, you guys can watch and see how that plays out. But I would say probably with Kenya. 
Kenya Moore. Okay. I all yeah. whenever I hear Kenya, I just I I hear her chant ringing in my head. Kenya yeah. Moore hair care. Okay. Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah, we think yeah. we all do. <laughs> All right. So this season going into it, obviously we saw on the trailer that we have some familiar faces from the past. Cynthia Bailey, Lisa Wu, Kim Zolciak Beerman. Was that a little weird for you? Because we did not have that last season. I know. I know. Was that on our bingo cards? I don't know. But <laughs> I think it's great. Like I, so I um, spend, a, and I'm sorry, like I feel like every time I go to do like a Zoom or a live, they come to cut my yard. So hopefully that's not too noisy. Oh, no, I can't hear it at all. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, but yeah, so I didn't get to spend much time this season with Lisa Wu or with Cam Zosiak, but I did spend a lot of time with Cynthia. And I got to tell you, I love me some Cynthia. Like, I wish that she would be a full-time peach again. She's just so much fun and just brings all the things. So I really enjoyed her coming back to the show and us being able to hang out. And we keep our friendship going on and off camera. So I really love her. She really is such a sweetheart. I've met her a few times and she's always just like, she has the biggest smile, the most infectious energy. What's not to love about Cynthia Bailey? I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> I agree with that. Okay. So now you're not a newbie technically anymore. We're going to call you a seasoned sophomore newbie. That's what yes. I do. A seasoned <laughs> sophomore newbie. Ice it up. Yes. Like a jerk sauce. <laughs> yes. Okay. So my question is what, like, Getting into this mix of ladies, yeah, is it hard? Because we always hear about housewives and trying to integrate into, you know, these yeah. already formed relationships and bonds of these different sisterhoods. Yeah. It doesn't matter which franchise it is. And yeah. you hear about how the ladies have a really tough time coming into it. Now you've already you've already gone through that process, but even still this new season, like is it hard to get in there with these ladies who most of them have been around filming the show for a while? Yeah, I think <laughs> I don't know how to turn off that where it's connected to my phone. How do I, do I put it on? I'm so sorry about that. Oh, no, you're okay. You can, are you on an iPhone? Yes. Okay. I put on do not disturb. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Perfect. I have to just keep going. Is it fine? Yeah. 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 You're fine. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, it's absolutely hard <laughs> to jump into the mix with these ladies, especially I think on the Housewives of Atlanta because. There's such an established franchise with so many great relationships and so much history. And I think for anybody, whether you're on a show or like you move to a new workplace and people have been there for 10 years or, you know, you're in a new city or you have a girlfriend who brings you around her friends, it, it is challenging to kind of show up fully as yourself and to get to understand the nuances of the different friendships. And this person doesn't like this person because of that. And it's like... <laughs> So yes, you know, I think it was very challenging, uh, especially for me, season one. I think this season though, I kind of find my footing and I really feel like I I fit with the ladies and I feel like I'm a part of the group. And especially because uh, episode one starts off at my husband's birthday party. So it's like, I'm hosting the event, the girls come and it's really fun. So yeah, I think that it started off kind of challenging, but now I kind of feel good and I feel like I'm a part of the group. You know, it's funny this, you gave me like the perfect segue here too, because one, I'm so happy that you feel like you're in it now and you don't feel like kind of an outsider coming in. You're like, I'm a part of this. I yes. deserve to be here. I belong here. And then you yes. mentioned your husband who we get to see in the trailer. And it looks like a, an extremely <laughs> difficult conversation coming. And you mm -hmm. both are so impressive. I mean, Super Bowls, mm -hmm. you know, like the Olympics. It's just wow. Like I said that at the beginning, just the resume is wow. But your mm -hmm. husband brings up an interesting conversation and it, it made it to the trailer. And you said that everyone's still living in the house, but that's going to change soon. Yeah. Do we have any update on that? Is there anything you can say about that? Well, yes. So um, we as a family had originally planned to live together for a year to two years. And um, we haven't hit the two year mark yet. And I still kind of selfishly love my family being here. Like, you know, for me, I'm always on the move. And so knowing that my son has his cousins here and my mom and dad can step in whenever Ross needs to move. I just feel like it's the perfect setup, but my husband's over it. Like, he's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Like, it's time for us to be solo again. Like, the Rosses need to be on their own. And so throughout the season, you know, you kind of see that, that hard conversation happening. You know, like, you know, who... Who's gonna like not necessarily who's gonna win? Cause I never think of in a relationship there's winning, right? Cause I feel like then somebody loses. But it's like whose perspective is the right one and the most important one at this moment. 
And so, yeah, we're definitely currently working on them moving out because um, my husband <laughs> he is over it and he's going to, you know, his perspective is right. Um, but yeah, it's going to be tricky to watch that conversation happen because you try to say those things the right way, but Adam, they just never really come. You know, it's like, I was about to say, like, does that hurt the fam? Like, do you just come home one day and say, listen, y'all got to go. Like, I, I mean, to, to, how do you have that conversation without maybe like, that's like, do you just rip off the bandaid or do you ease it off? I wouldn't even know how to navigate that. If I, I mean, yeah, we, we try both strategies. So you'll see, you'll see, we try both strategies. <laughs> okay. You know, and two, I feel like last season you were having the difficult conversations about more babies. And then yeah. this season you're like the fa or your husband's like the family's got to go. It's like, you're not catching a break on the personal front with the storylines. No, you're right. I mean, I'm definitely not catching a break on the personal front and some, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully this will be the last of that. And the next season we can move on to something else. <laughs> But yeah, your girl's getting it with this family stuff. Oh, all right. Well, we can't wait to watch that. Now, I do have a question for you. Since you've done reality TV before, you had your own show, right? So mm -hmm. how did that experience compare to being on The Housewives? That's a great question, Adam. So it's such a big difference when you're doing a reality show with your family than doing it with an ensemble cast. Um, because obviously with my family, I knew all the players that were on the show. Um, and, you know, it's just, it, it, it makes it a little bit easier. There's a comfortability there. There's this, you know, feeling of like, you know, there's unconditional love. So it's like nothing you could say that's, you know, unless you're going to go way for the jugular, that's going to potentially put the whole family, you know, at risk of, of, of completely falling apart. When you're on an ensemble cast show where, you know, you, the relationships are new and very vulnerable, um, I think it's a big difference because you just never, it's like every time you come in, you're like, you don't know what's happening, happening. You don't know what someone's going to say and you don't know how it's going to end up, you know, affecting the whole group. And so it's, it's, it's very, very different. But I do, what I do love though, is that for us, we get to have both, like our families on there and we have the dynamics of the women, which I think makes the show so rich because you get all those perspectives, all those families, you know, all these things happening all at once. Um, that's why I think people love the show. So, but yeah, definitely different when you're working with people, especially when you are just meeting big personalities. It's like, you know, so many things could happen. I feel like if I ever showed up to a Real Housewives of Atlanta casting like a film event, I would show up so doe-eyed like I'm so excited to see everyone and you just like get red for filth like you go in <laughs> thinking it's going to be so great and then it's just like exactly damn, damn. like that yeah 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 that, that happens a lot because I think sometimes things are misconstrued and also too I think the the hard part is is like you go into the situation wanting to get to know everybody for yourself um and people will say oh I don't care if you're that person's friend or that person's friend but then they do care they care <laughs> <laughs> they care and they want you to just be their friends and they want you to carry the bird, like the, you know, I don't want to call it hate. I don't think anyone on a show hates each other, but the disdain they have for someone else, they want you to carry it too. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't have those issues. Like I'm going to come in and love who love me. <laughs> don't put that energy on me. Yes. All right. Also, I wanted to pick your brain about going through this season. Did you have, I mean, I'm sure every season is going to have its challenges, but was there one this season that stood out to you the most that you had to navigate and maybe it got tricky for you? Oh, that's a, that's a good question, Adam. And I was telling, I've been ripping and running before this interview. And I was like, I need, I was talking to Sheree actually before we got, um, before I got on the call with you. And I was like, I'm trying to jog my memory with all the stuff that we filmed. Cause you know, we filmed from October to February. So it's like so oh. much that happened in that time span and, and her, we're both like, what happened again? Like, where were we? Who am I? Um, and so if I could think about um, maybe the toughest experience this season in the, or the trickiest, um, I, I, st I still think it is ultimately really, so it's like, okay, for me, I start off the season, right? Cause like in the off season, I became closest to Candy and Marlo. Those are my two girls. Like I would hang out with them all, you know, like we went, Candy and I went on vacation together. Marlo and I talk on the phone every day. And so, you know, right out the gate, they have a big falling out and it's like, you know, and it's like constantly that navigating, like wanting to be a good friend to somebody, but also, you know, like trying to figure out how do you stay neutral? That happens with Kenya and Marlo. So it's just this constant, like trying to be good friends to the girls while feeling loyal and also still getting to know them and all that stuff. But just some days I felt like, <laughs> I don't know, like 
<laughs> this feels very high school being on Housewives. I didn't say that, but... <laughs> it's okay. I said it for you. I said it for you. Now, you already answered my next question, which is, you know, who are you closest to in the cast? So, okay, now we got that down. I am curious to kind of pick your brain a little bit because you've never filmed with her. And, you know, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip is airing right now. And we have a season four coming, which, by the way, would you ever do Ultimate Girls Trip? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you would? So now that Portia was on this past season and we hear fans saying, well, throw her in the mix. Right. Would, would you be willing to, I mean, obviously I know that you guys as housewives, you don't get any say so as to who is right. cast and who's not. You guys just kind of get told where to show up and when to film. But would that be something that you would be excited about? Or would you just be like, oh, I know your history on this show. I got to be <laughs> careful with this one. Um, no, I would be I would be excited for Portia to come back in the mix. You know, obviously I watched the show before getting on there and I think she brings a cool dynamic to the show. I just, you know, like you said, it's like you just don't know what's going to happen. Like where where are things going to fall? Because I don't know all of her relationships with all the girls. I don't know how close her and Marlo were, how close her and Sheree were. I don't remember all that. But, um, you know, it just it's like you'll see this season that there's kind of like at some points it feels like the group is a little bit divided. And so, and then we come back together and then there's, you know, it's like this, this constant back and forth. So I'm like, where would she land? Like, you know, like who would she be closest to or what does she, does she bring us together? Does she cause us to go more apart? Like, you know, so it's interesting. I don't know if she's going to come back for season 16. I haven't heard anything about like any final, you know, cast members for 16. So, but I think she would definitely be interesting to put back in the mix. It'd be interesting too, to see if you guys would get along because we know that Drew Sedora is going through her divorce, which for you guys, yeah. this has to be so wild because you find out in the moment when you're texting as like a group of ladies who are friends who are filming a show and then you find out because you get google alerts and it shows up on page six and all these major media outlets but her and Portia are best friends and I wonder based off of everything that you're saying about how dynamics can change because there's a disdain here and I need your loyalty I wonder yeah. how that that would play out for you but I think that you could handle your own so even if it didn't go in the way that you'd want I think you could handle your own Oh yeah, I'm not worried about that at all, especially going into season three. I'm <laughs> I'm ready. All but right. um but I did I did want to mention though how you know difficult it's been to see and hear and you know and and just the realization of Drew going through this divorce with Ralph, you know, like I um, you know, all things aside, I am um, you know, I love love. I'm obviously married myself, and you know, marriage is very serious to me, and she has three beautiful children, and so I'm just really sad because I felt like they had some issues in their marriage, but I felt like from what I could see, you know, I thought they were working through them. And right before the divorce was announced, I was like, she had a huge party for Ralph, his 40th. And I was there with them and they looked like they were in love and happy. So that's been really tough for me to, to, to witness that. And I really wish them both really well. I think that is a huge testament to you as a person also, because if you don't necessarily get along with someone but you're also not cheering on when they are going through some of the most difficult moments yeah. in their life in their marriage whatever it is it's just a huge testament to you so you I really are you're amazing I'm loving <laughs> this now, I know that I spoke about this earlier at the very beginning but I actually met you for the first time in person at BravoCon and that was in New York City and now we're headed to Vegas whoop, whoop. are you excited I am. I love Vegas. I love New York. Like I'm a New York girl. My husband played for the Giants. So I love New York, but I actually like the gamble too. So I love that we're going to be in Vegas. So I get the best of both worlds. I get to go to the casinos at night, get to hang out with fans in the daytime. So that's perfect for me. And also last year was your first year kind of seeing the yeah. pandemonium of the fandom and everyone just ripping at you, pulling at you. I love you. Maybe I don't love you. It's just right. wild. And everyone's just screaming. I think there yeah. were over 35,000 fans, something like that. So yeah. it's almost like your first season on the show, your first season at BravoCon, your yeah. second season on the show. Now, you know what to expect. Yeah. And now it's like you have your footing going into this time. Yeah, I was overwhelmed by I didn't I, I was not prepared for the level of love and support that people would show us at BravoCon. And I think especially on this platform, you know, that you can get lots of mixed reviews and people have very strong feelings about you and what you do and all that stuff. It's really nice to get so much love, you know, from people who connect with the deeper stories and connect with you for whatever reason. I, I really enjoy BravoCon and I'm looking forward to the next one. Do you 
Mike, throughout the process of going through that weekend at BravoCon, you, I know that all of the Bravo talent meets so many different people from so many different franchises, but do you have yeah. anyone who stood out to you the most, the most memorable housewife or cast member from another show hmm. that you encountered? That's a great question. You know, I really encountered everybody very briefly because we were all ripping and running so much. Um, but I guess the person who it was nice to finally meet them in person because we have a lot of like similarities and synergies and we've connected prior, but we had never met in person was Wendy, Wendy Osefo from Potomac. And so it was nice to meet her and her husband and to spend some time with her. So I would say probably she was, but I saw a lot of the, you know, a lot of the OGs and, you know, it was really fun to, to feel that sisterhood and that love um, while we were there, especially when we had the huge like first day on stage where it was like, you know, like the, Orange County and Potomac and all the shows, Beverly Hills. It was really- Oh, was dope. that Andy's Legends Ball? Yes. Yes. That was epic. That was wild. Yeah, that was epic. All right, so I'm not surprised about Dr. Wendy Osefo. She seems like, I could, I could totally see that matchup. And yeah. I guess leading into this, because I know your time is super precious, but I do have a few more questions for you because you've been on some of the biggest platforms already without the show. Mm -hmm. Now- that you have the show, there's obviously more eyes in your life and like on you and your family. What would you say one of the most rewarding parts of being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta would be? And I love I love your questions too, Adam. They're 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 you're really great with the questions. Um, I would say probably the most rewarding part has been this last season, the response I got from a lot of women who have really struggled with balancing family life and their work and you know, marriage and all that stuff, they were really proud of me for being vulnerable about sharing, like, you know, like I'm having a hard time deciding if I want to have a second child. And so for me, that was cool because I think sometimes those conversations are hard to have. We don't see people having them. So you don't know if it's a, it's normal to feel that way. So you kind of push through and do it anyway. And it's to the detriment of you or your family. So I really loved, um, you know, being able to connect with other women who were like-minded, who felt that way. Um, and then it also too, like, you know, I, I guess because I have the perspective of an athlete where I know that nothing lasts forever and, you know, you put in all this work and you hope that it will, you know, one day pay off. I'm also just really grateful to be a part of, you know, such an iconic show in our, you know, in pop culture, like the real house of Atlanta is a huge part of pop culture. And I think it will always be. So I feel very honored to be a part of that. Um, and I'm not taking it for granted and I'm excited however long it lasts. I just want to, you know, to, to, to enjoy it. So it's, it's cool to be a part of that and also cool to connect with people who feel and are experiencing, you know, some of the things that I'm going through. That's awesome too, that you're living in the moment and realizing, you know, sometimes these things, like you said, from an athlete's perspective, sometimes these things come to an end and they don't always last forever. So instead of waiting for what opportunities are going to come out of this, I'm going to really live in this and enjoy it while I'm in it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, to end us off, and if that's if you could share, but do you have any other exciting news or projects or anything that's coming up that you can talk about? I mean, you literally have 5 million things happening. We're trying to kick the family out. We have our businesses. Your husband has his business. But it's right. like, we're on reality TV. I, you're all over the place, but I didn't know if there's anything else that you try juggling on your plates. No, awesome. And I appreciate that. You know, I'm Jamaican. They always say we have 7 million jobs. So I'm just keeping the tradition alive um, as a true Jamaican. But, you know, excited. The show is going to be, you know, airing May 7. So excited for you guys to tune in and, and, and watch that. I am... Um, uh, of course, Mommy Nation is my organization that supports moms on their motherhood journey. And we have a really cool event on the show that wait till you guys see Kenya. It's just, you have, it's just, it's going to be awesome. So support Mommy Nation if you can. I'm also working on two new projects, one that I'll announce on the show um, that I hope that you guys will support and love and the second one coming soon. So just follow me on social media, Sonia Richie Ross um, on all platforms, R-I-C-H-I-R-O-S-S. -S. And um and I'm always announcing cool things. So yeah, so this was fun, Adam. Thanks for having me. You have a great, great podcast. So thank you for supporting our show and for getting your audience excited about the show. We appreciate that. Oh my gosh, thank you. And I love the fact that you have an 8 p.m. Eastern time slot because that means we get to go to bed after, we get our fix, and then we get to watch <laughs> you ladies on Watch What Happens Live after, and then we're still in bed by 10 o'clock. So yes. hey, 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming on seriously. And thank oh, you for just sharing you. everything that you have going on with us and being so open to our questions. We cannot thank wait you. to watch you and I cannot wait to meet you again in Vegas. Yes. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you next time.